NVIDIA's free and open source drivers are not what you think they are. Now, if you're here for the Steam Deck content, I hope that this video is going to be of interest to you as well, even if you're not really a Linux nerd yet. See, there are several reasons why Valve decided to go with an AMD chipset in the Steam Deck, but the biggest reason is that AMD's drivers are open source and come baked into the Linux kernel. This is really important because it means that Valve can quickly roll out new drivers. They can also make changes to the drivers without needing to beg AMD for source code or permission. And it's not just Valve, anyone can make contributions to the AMD graphics stack. And the whole ecosystem of AMD graphics on Linux improves when these improvements are accepted into the Linux kernel. But it also means that people like Jeff Gerling are able to take a Raspberry Pi, stick an AMD card into a PCIe adapter board, compile the AMD graphics drivers for the ARM-based CPU of the Pi, and have desktop class GPU acceleration on a non-x86 platform. This is the power of free and open source software, or as I'll refer to it from here on out, FOSS. And it's not just AMD. Intel also releases not just their GPU drivers, but many, many other of their drivers into the Linux kernel. Meanwhile, in the NVIDIA world, they've always kind of done their own thing. And by done their own thing, I mean snubbed Linux convention. NVIDIA has been a notorious presence in the FOSS world, and while their competition has published free and open source drivers for over a decade at this point, NVIDIA chooses to keep their drivers proprietary. And that sucks, not just because they have kept their GPU drivers to themselves, but also because the way they have implemented their drivers have broken countless systems and Linux installs. On my main editing rig right over here, with an NVIDIA Titan X graphics card, there's about a 75% chance that the machine just won't sleep properly. And there's about an 80% chance that it won't wake up after it has successfully gone to sleep. This is definitely because of NVIDIA's proprietary graphics drivers breaking the way Linux sleeps. And there's many other issues too. One of the biggest has been the fact that NVIDIA has delayed the rollout of Wayland, which is a GPU accelerated display server. NVIDIA has been so bad to deal with, in fact, that Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, flipped off NVIDIA in a now highly memed lecture to college students. I got myself a two years ago a laptop that had uh, uh, two graphic cards. It had an Intel and an NVIDIA and it had the famous Optimus chip that was difficult to operate from Linux. And uh, at some point I was kind of expecting that maybe NVIDIA would uh, kind of chip in and do something for it. And they said flat out, no, we're not doing any support. And um, I, I, say I know exactly what you're talking about. And I'm very happy to say that uh, it's the exception rather than the rule. And I'm also happy to very publicly point out that NVIDIA has been one of the worst trouble spots we've had with hardware manufacturers. And that is really sad because NVIDIA tries to sell chips, a lot of chips, into the Android market. And NVIDIA has been the single worst company we've ever dealt with. So, NVIDIA, you. <laughs> so, it might come as a bit of a shock that NVIDIA actually released their graphics drivers as free software. That's awesome, right? NVIDIA is now publishing GPU kernel modules as open source with dual GPL MIT licensing, starting with the R515 driver release. You can find the source code for these kernel modules in the NVIDIA Open GPU kernel module repo on GitHub. And yes, it's awesome. But what about the title of the video? How could this possibly be a bad thing? Well, it's not a bad thing. And if you read the title and thought it was derogatory, sorry, <laughs> that wasn't my intention. But I stand by the title. This announcement is probably not what you think it is. But before we get into that, I wanna take a second and thank Marcus Batson for his continued top tier support on Patreon. It's because of people like Marcus that I'm able to continue doing videos like this. So thanks. First, when I think open source drivers, I think mainline kernel. And that is not what this is. Though they did say in their press release that they do want to have uh, their drivers in the kernel eventually. Quote, NVIDIA GPU drivers have been designed over the years to share code across operating systems, GPUs, and Jets and SOCs, so that we can provide a consistent experience across all our supported platforms. The current code base does not conform to the Linux kernel design conventions and is not a candidate for Linux upstream. There are plans for work on an upstream approach with the Linux kernel community and partners such as Canonical, Red Hat, and SUSE. And the thing is, if you're not familiar, the AMD and Intel drivers come baked into your system, meaning that your distros have a chance to get things properly set up and tested with those drivers. 
and they can make changes to better support your hardware and their distribution. But with Nvidia's drivers, it was less neat. Nvidia's proprietary drivers were basically a black box that got bolted onto the Linux kernel and broke things for the privilege. This instead seems to be an open sourcing of the existing Linux drivers, which, hey, that's actually really cool. Having the FOSS drivers means that we're gonna be able to install these drivers without having to taint our system with unholy black boxes. And eventually the FOSS drivers might even allow us to do cool things that AMD and Intel drivers have let us do forever. Like for example, native resolution boot screens and having our system actually sleep and wake up properly. And maybe, just maybe, having a hardware accelerated H.264, H.265 video encoding on Linux with RTX series cards. That would be nice. At the moment though, the driver is a long way off from being upstreamed into the kernel, so we're just gonna have to wait for now. But another reason that this might not be what you think it is, is that the user space driver for CUDA, RT, and other things are still quite proprietary. So if you're a gamer or you produce media on Linux, you're still going to have to install proprietary user space drivers. Hopefully they'll open source the rest of the graphics stack at some point, as not doing so makes their open source drivers less useful in the long run and for different applications. Furthermore, this release is only considered production ready for data center class Turing and Ampere GPUs. Nvidia's workstation and GeForce class cards are considered alpha quality and require the addition of a kernel flag to boot with them and have them be supported with this driver. So that means that if you have a card that's older than Turing, you're gonna have to stick with the proprietary driver or use the open source Nouveau driver. But speaking of the Nouveau driver, this could actually benefit the Nouveau driver developers considerably. But why would we need two open source drivers? Well, it's simple. For Volta and older architecture cards. Now, it stands to reason that NVIDIA is going to end support for the proprietary drivers on Linux once the FOSS ones are stabilized. Which means that NVIDIA cards could suddenly stop getting updated driver support. Two of the workstations here at Heavy Element have Titan X graphics cards in them. That's the Pascal architecture. They're still absolute monsters and work great for my gaming and media production workflows, but if they stop getting support, then I'll need to turn to the Nouveau drivers. And hopefully the Nouveau developers will actually peek at NVIDIA's code base here and incorporate lots of things for these older cards. But overall, this is a super exciting thing to see. I am so happy that NVIDIA is finally releasing their graphics drivers as open source, the way God intended but I'd like to know what you think. Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear from you. I wanna thank my Linux warriors over on Patreon and YouTube members. It's because of you guys that I'm able to continue doing this kind of work, so thank you. If you believe in what I'm doing and you wanna help support this show, get down in the description and click those links and become a Linux warrior today. But that's gonna do it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one.